Hello everyone, today on Adventures with Paul and Dan, we're playing around with a music test photo. Playing chords. Uh, we have a Yamaha keyboard with a MIDI connection right there. And I have a Maple uh, from Leaf Labs. Uh, Arduino clone, this runs at 75 megahertz. It's hiding under there, being provided power by a wall wart. Uh, MIDI comes in. I've done a little circuit card that's got a MIDI receive. Um, I patterned that off of the uh, Spark Fun MIDI card. So I took the MIDI in off of that and built my own little circuit card. And then we have a fiber optic transmitter, which is effectively a little LED inside a holding or holder that you can stuff a uh, fiber optic into. Don't need any fancy connectors, you just cut the end of your fiber off and uh, screw her in. Now, on this one, when the light's on, the coil's on. So if I take my flashlight here, and you can see the coil goes on back there, which is pretty cool. Anyhow, so we'll plug that back in here. Now, come on over to uh, see our coil here. Um, I had been playing with a short piece of fiber. We adapted a fiber, octave, fiber optic receiver right here. Here's our fiber optic. I got like 50 feet worth of fiber right there. Um, I set up, I changed this board so that it would transmit through the fiber to there, so now there's no electrical connection between our Arduino and the uh, enable line on the UCC chips. Uh, we're still deriving power from it, but this isn't being used so we could, right now. We can unplug this and pull those power lines right there and just plug it in. We could, we could literally swap that, that card system right there for the one next to the keyboard. Pretty much, yes. You could, you could, plug you could and relo play nearly. You could relocate this over to where the keyboard is and have this drive the coil through the end of this. As a matter of fact, I had the first test of this long cable. I plugged it in right here sure. to uh, see that it worked. But right now, this isn't actually doing anything for our setup. It's totally disconnected. As a matter of fact, I even clipped the pin so you can't move the little green wire over onto the board anymore. It strictly goes through the fiber. Um, there's get a little down. length of that, so you can hook it yes. up. Yes, yeah. I did leave the original 555 timer. I saw your link on Hackaday where the uh, inventor died just, what, day before yesterday? Yeah, that was sad. Anyhow, there's a 555 right there. That was the uh, interrupter for this. Anyhow, so we have the fiber. Going back to our board. The board receives a key down message from the keyboard. It converts that into a train of pulses to turn the keyboard on and off. And so that didn't sound pleasant. <laughs> now, just just so people can hear the difference, go ahead and turn the sound on the, the piano on so they can hear the both of them. You gotta, you gotta punch it. Now I'll turn the sound off. Chris, How about we uh, kill the lights real fast so we can show that beat frequency, or that uh, uh, lights are behind you. Oh, I'm not in a good position to... I am tethered to the wall. There we go. Probably wouldn't hurt to... Kick the door? Hold on, let me get the door. Well, I'm in a dark room with Paul. Not that door, it was this door I was wondering about. Because this was what's lighting the room up right Is there going to be enough light, do you think, to... Going to the coil. Dark. Oh, I don't know where it's at. There it is. So let it spin up. Yeah, that's going good. Now watch this. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can see the sparks in the same spot each time. Yeah. Pick a pick a position in the middle of the keyboard. Turn the lights on. <laughs> hmm. Kyle just expressed an opinion. Paul's junk shelves. Yes. Anyhow, so that's our setup. We got the MIDI working. I'm playing around with the software to improve so the... So the entire system is power for the keyboard. Yep. And then the keyboard generates a MIDI signal, which goes out through this cable into this guy here. Yep, we did that. Sh that shield was done on our little XY table out back. I just... Careful with the tummy. Yeah. Um, well, I designed that and built it in uh, one afternoon, actually. Um, the maple has the uh, USB separate from the serial, uh, so the port uh, pins 0 and 1, which are normally the serial port, aren't used to program the board. I put a jumper on here, so if you plug this into a regular Arduino, you can pull that jumper and then program the board without having the... So that, that little jumper right there is just a, a Arduino maple trans. Tra right. Converter. If if you're using an Arduino when you want to program the Arduino, you got to pull that jumper so you're not. Oh, oh and, and you only have line. to pull that if that shield is on the Arduino at the top. That's right. right. If you pull okay. the whole shield off, you can still program the All Arduino right. like normal. This this cable here is power for this the circuit system. That's right. This is the fiber optic, which runs down long and over, up into the the coil right here down into that receiver yes now from the receiver here I got a little this is uh, power right here ground is the bare wire back there the little blue wire you see in between goes to um, our inverter here this is a 74HC 14N inverter chip so this has an inverse output so I ran it through one of the inverters here that wasn't being used and have that feed into this pin here which goes off to our uh, drive lines on the uh, UCC chips. And the UCC chips are the, the MOSFET drivers that's which are the, located. The dri that's the driver for the gate driver transformer which is back here which is 110 volts exposed back there so I'm not going to stick my finger in too much. <laughs> but um, and then well this, this is Steve Ward's mini Tesla coil so you got the MOSFETs back here that are actually driving the primary. All right, rock and roll. So, closing comments, what's next? What's next? Uh, playing around with the software more, trying to see if I can make it run smoother than it already is. Sure. Play more notes simultaneously, clearer. Um, sure. Haven't really played around with it as much as we've let's, done. Uh, let's let them hear the, uh, that weird thing we were getting where we were playing the, the same two notes, just a different octave. Okay. So if I hit a C, the lowest C, and a middle C, you can hear the B frequency. If I hit, this is, a high, this is the lowest and the highest. At least one of the, yeah, you can hear it wave in. Wow, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you're getting B frequencies. Let's see. Not sure if that's good, bad, or indifferent. But you can definitely hear, we were running into a problem a bit ago where when you played a high note and a low note at the same time, the low note got engulfed by the high note. Right. So that was a function of a duty cycle. I had the duty cycle cranked way down to like 3% or something like that. Sure. And with the much higher duty cycle. We're at 50% duty cycle right now. And when I'm saying duty cycle, I mean from one wave crest to the next, I leave it on for half and then shut it off for the rest. Um, let's see. The, uh, this will work with any coil that you can run continuous wave. Uh, DRS STC, this will turn into a nice little slag of ash. Uh, you will blow your uh, IGBTs almost immediately because uh, I'm way above the um, the maximum duty cycle on those. Sure. And uh, let's see. 
I think that's about it. I don't have anything else I can think of at the moment. Got anything Great. you want to add? No, it's it's an awesome benchmark. We got to get Smiljan running. Yes. We and then bigger, we need a bigger coil to play with. And we got we got a little two foot tall coil as opposed yeah, to a little got, eight inch one. I got another one over there to make into something. So. And then we have, of course, the uh, secret the, project after that. Oh yes. That I, had, you, me, and Chris know about, and yes. not a lot of other people. I think I've mentioned it in passing, like Aaron and them. So that'll be that'll be a thing. Yes. And uh, this this entire process of getting the keyboard and the the driver and even the uh, the candy music driver over there will all be a part of that. Yes. And we'll need to come up with a way to switch between the two drivers, and mm -hmm. that way you don't have to have somebody standing at the keyboard in order to make the coil make noise. Yes. So. Um, I can just you can just load up on the uh, micro SD card. I mean, if you put, if you want like three copies of the uh, song, you just give it three different file names and you can put whatever you want on there and it'll just keep going until it runs out of songs. Now, didn't you do a new Karamea? Yes, I did. Let's, let's give him Karamea real fast. Okay, since... hold on. It'll take me a moment. I'm going to remember to turn the thing off. Because <laughs> when you, well, no, because it's fiber optic. It won't just start going on its own when you unplug it. Well, if there's enough room light going into the receiver, you run into Oh, okay. So ambient light is an issue. Yes. It's like there's a beautiful video up where Chris was having Joe DePrima give a run-through on his very early musical Tesla coil. Yep. And he didn't put an inverter on his receiver. Yeah. So when the light was on, the coil was off. Right now, when the light's on, the coil is on. Okay. Well, when it's the other way around, Chris just unplugged the fiber optic and suddenly and the coil turned on. Yeah, and it's going nuts. The big difference was Joe DePrima's coil was like that Considerably tall. larger, yeah. It was like sitting on a table right next to him and it fired off an arc and he <laughs> nearly jumped out of his skin. <laughs> um, I don't know which... Um, well, we can, have, we can have a bad start. We're amateurs. Okay. And we're going already. Long, low note at the beginning. It's on the sheet And the the rests you heard are in the sheet music. I mean, it doesn't at times. It there was a couple of spots where it sounded a little weird. It does, but I mean, that's the first chord at the beginning, and it's like two whole notes. It's long, it's low, and it's there, and that's what it sounds like. <laughs> but and the other one, there's a. It sounds almost like a stumble. Or yeah, I, I heard that a, in the music. There's an eighth and eighth, or, or, yeah, an eighth and eighth a quarter, then a dotted quarter, a, no, a dotted eighth followed by a sixteenth, followed by an eighth and an eighth. That's where it sounds like it stumbles right there. I mean, there's there's triplets. The triplets play fine. There's a couple of them. Where did the other one go? Anyhow, the, the triplets play fine. There's the other one right there. And the where it goes to the high soprano as well plays nicely. 
but it's like there's some pl there's some places where it's all rest, so the song the music just goes away for a minute or a second. <laughs> but that threw me for a while as well. Sure. So the uh, the new the new format for writing on the coils is that online somewhere? Or is that the same format or did uh, it change? The same or? format. Um, the the only thing I'm going to change is the way triplets are handled. Okay. And basically, I'm going to take the mini note and add a thousand to it to mean it's part of a triplet. Okay. So right now it's adding 128, which is great if you're dealing in hex, which is what I live in, but it makes it a little hard to figure out what you're looking at. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I figured out that the values being stored are being read as integers, and an integer in Arduino C is a 16-bit value, so I can have things greater than 255. Sure. So... Well, that sounds awesome, and that's all available on the Giger forms, right? Yes, the it is. the the music, the way to. Okay, so the the, the information for writing the music for that system, yes. but not the software for that system. Correct. And we don't have any software posted for this system right. either. We are not. We have not posted software yet. Are we going to post software? As soon as I figure out how to get a Creative Commons license tacked onto it, so that if somebody takes it and starts selling it. We, we can, can jump on them, them. sure. Yes. We have a legal team that takes <laughs> care of stuff like that for us. It's just getting all the documentation taken care of. All right. Well, that's awesome. Um, awesome progress on this project. Um, the next step, I think, is to do a little couple tweaks to the software and yep. to get Smiljohn built. And we have everything to build Smiljohn. We just got to get some time in front of a saw and a mill to put it all together. Exactly correct. And then uh, we can run it on Smiljohn and see how that coil handles it. It's... All it's going to do is make it louder, I think. Yes, bigger sparks. Bigger sparks, louder more arcs. impressive. Yes. yes, impressive is good. We like impressing people. Mm -hmm. All righty, thanks, Paul. I'll catch you later.